That is so much easier. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing well. Now in this video I make a cart for my table saw. So previously I had my table saw stored in there underneath my MFT table and it was out of the way. It didn't take up any floor space but it was actually starting to hurt my back taking it in and out in there and I have a kind of a back problems lately. So anything to save the back is worth its weight in gold. So I'm willing to give up the floor space to um, have this on a cart and have it much easier to use. It does come, the Bosch, with this um, kind of fold out trestle kind of table, but it's cumbersome, it's not the right height. I wanna use my MFT table as an outfeed table. So in this video, we build this cart. And this design is adaptable to anything you guys will have seen me do it a hundred times before if you've been watching my channel. If you haven't, you can watch this and you can see exactly how I built my MFT table, how I built my miter saw station, and how I built planters and a hundred other different projects. So it's good. Nice and simple to build, easy, quick, and super strong. And we've a nice bit of storage underneath. I have my dust extraction hose underneath there. I have my gripper ripper, tool cleaners. I have push sticks. We have our blades on the side. All there ready to go. One nice, neat, easy to use package that can be wheeled over there at the end of my miter saw station out of the way. And it absolutely saves the back. It's going to encourage me to use my table saw a bit more. I didn't like taking it out of there to set it up each time I wanted to use it. Um, at least now I can wheel it out of the way. So yeah. Let's crack on. Let's make ourselves a workshop card for table saw. And like I said, this design could be, if you just want a workshop card for any reason, you can absolutely use this design to do it. So let's crack on. Okay, let's very quickly have a look at the materials I'm gonna use for this. So I have some casters here. I have two ones with brakes and just two standard ones. They're the same height. Now these are 75 kilos a piece they can carry. It's a bit overkill for this job, but you might as well overspec it as underspec it. So like I said, two locked ones for the front and two standard ones for the back. So there's the casters. Okay, so for the frame, I'm just gonna be using four by two construction lumbar. These are just eight foot lengths. This is probably the cheapest stuff to build anything out of at the minute. I'm getting these for roughly about six euros a lint. Like I said, I had intended on making it out of birch ploy and stuff, but it's just so expensive at the minute. This is what we're going to use. Okay, for the walls of the cart, I'm going to be using some WBP plywood. Again, it's not near the quality of birch ploy, but it's a little bit cheaper. Actually, it's a lot cheaper and it's pretty decent stuff as well. It's, it'll do for this. Again, this is just shop furniture. It just needs to be functional and to do a job. It doesn't have to be pretty. I have some birch ploy left over. This is some 19 millimeter or three quarter birch ploy. So I'm gonna use that for the top. It's the fact that I have a bit in the workshop already that I've bought months ago when it was relatively affordable, I'll use that for the top. But for the sides, it's gonna be 12 mil or a half inch WBP ploy. Now I already have my dimensions here just roughed out. I just have to allow for the height of my caster, the fact that I want to keep my top of my table saw in line with the top of my MFT bench. That's a set height there. So just allow for this plus the thickness of my 19 mil top that my table saw is going to sit on. That's how I got my dimensions. Obviously your table saw that you're going to make this for, if you do decide to make this, if it's not the Bosch one, you will have slightly different dimensions, slightly different dimensions for your out feed table. So it's just allow for your casters, allow for the frame, allow for the top of your table and allow for the height of your table saw. So that gets your dimensions. It's nice and simple. Now, the construction method I'm going to be using is the same one I've used for hundreds of projects in my workshop for my miter saw station, my MFT table, my um, lumber cart and thousands of other things that I've built over the years. It's just going to be a nice two by four construction that you can use for workbenches, for shelves, for racking, for everything. It works. So without further ado, I'm going to get on and just dimension up this four by two now and we start assembling this thing. It's going to be super quick. Okay, stop block set up. I have eight legs to cut, so I'm just going to get on and do it. Okay, now our eight legs are cut, I'm gonna put them together in that L-shaped pattern you've seen me do a hundred times before, so it's screwed together exactly like that. Nice and simple. So eight legs then become four legs, and we can build our frames internally within our legs then. Just like that. 
Okay, now that the four legs are made, I'm going to dimension the top so that I can get the rest of the dimensions for the internals of the frame. It'll all make sense now in a minute. So I'm just going to cut down this 19 millimeter birch or three quarter inch birch ploy to the size that I need. Okay, we have our top cut. I have my legs set up right out to the edge on all four corners. This is really good and square. It's cut on my MFT table, so I know it's perfectly square. So just orientated my legs. Now, the slightly wider, the wider side is to the front. So I want to or orientate my legs the correct way around. So there's two ways you can do it. As I've explained in multiple videos, you have a short side and a long side here. I want to keep the short side to the front so that this space here is a little bit wider. If I was to flip the leg around and put the long side here, you can see it's the length of a four by two plus the width of a four by two. That narrows down this gap here. I don't want to do that. So I want to keep the short one or just a one four by two width to the front and orientate the legs in that direction. Now, now I can measure it with the internals of my frame. And the first measurement I always want to take is the short side first. So this one between here and here, because that piece has to screw in first, because if you screw this piece in, as I've explained loads of times before, you then have nothing to screw to in here. It'll all make sense when I go to assemble this. So I want to cut four pieces the exact same length now to go across here, across here, 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 and here. And then we'll have another four, a different, slightly different length to go inside here and here and at the back. So I'll get on to that and we'll assemble it. It'll all make sense. Okay guys, there is the top essentially all screwed together. So I've built it upside down, sitting on its top so that everything is gonna be nice and flat when I flip this thing back over. And again, it's just all screwed together. You can screw the screws internally if you don't wanna see them on the outside. It doesn't really matter. I'll be honest, um, it's just an aesthetic thing. It's shop furniture at the end of the day. Whether you see the screws or not, that's up to you. But it can all be screwed internally. Just make sure you put your short side in first and your long side so that you can grip both four by twos. Now I'm just gonna do the same again around the top here. So I'll flip this upside down, sit it on the top so that everything is nice and flat. I have a nice flat reference surface and just screw those four in place and then it's a case of fix the top to this. We're almost there. A couple of few things. We put a few shelves in and we'll get the castles on. Let's do it. Okay, now it's just a case to get a countersink screw to hold the top on, one in each corner will be fine. The weight of the table saw will keep this well pressed down. So there won't be much to do. Okay guys, so I have the top fit, I just whipped it back off there again, so I'm going to start fitting the internals now. So I've just cut a base, I'm just going to put one uh, base or shelf in this, let that be the actual bottom of this uh, workshop, trolley, cabinet, cart, whatever you want to call it. There's not a whole lot of room in here, it's the height that it is because it needs to be this height because of the table saw and the height of my MFT table saw. I'm not going to get too much storage underneath, but I'm going to get enough. So you can slide in these pieces, you don't have to take it back apart again in order to get these in. Send them in through the wide gap at the front and you can actually work these around and into place. So just like that. So the WBP ploy I'm going to use for the base. You could leave it open too if you wanted. If you want to put longer stuff through here, by all means, leave it open. You don't have to close it up. I'm just going to put a back and two sides on this and uh, just leave it exactly like that and leave the front open for storage. So I get all these fit. We'll jump back in and we'll get the wheels on it. Anyways, there we go. Nice and simple. Couldn't be easier. This took 
20 minutes, half an hour to chop all this up and put it together. It's nice, quick and simple. It's extremely strong and like I said, extremely cheap to make. And this will take a good bit of beaving. Now, let's get the wheels on and then we want to put a frame around the top just to make it look somewhere nice. We hit it with a router, a little bit of sanding and we're just about done. Okay guys, just screwing the casters on. Uh, braked ones to the front, nice and simple. There's plenty of stuff to screw to underneath here with this four by two frame. You don't have to add any blocks or anything like that. It's just moving them out to the corners and screwing them home. Just using a couple of washers because the holes on the actual casters are a little bit on the large side. Okay guys, there we go. Happy days indeed. Now I'm just going to add a border to this. I'm going to raise it up just so there's a lip all the way around just to hold on the table saw. I'll be screwing the table saw to this anyway, but I uh, just have a nice border just to protect the edge of the plywood and to protect my legs from banging off it as well. So we're going to cut a four by two to go all the way around this, frame it off. We'll hit that with a round over bit and we we'll sand it up. Let's do it. Okay guys, just to get this fitting a little bit better, I have to take down some of these corners. The thing about working with construction numbers, it can be twisted, it can be warped, it can be bent. Some of the stuff is twisted, so even though my top is perfectly square, the frame is protruding a little bit on some of the corners. So we just want to hit this down with the hand plane. Right guys, so the four by two frame is just around the edge. Again, that'll just protect the plywood from getting beaten up and splintered and banged off stuff. This is replaceable and it's good and strong. I have it around all my workbenches, works absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna hit this now with a round over bit all the way around, give it a little bit of stand up and we're almost there and we fit the table saw it in. Lovely. Okay guys, so it is all sanded up. Now I didn't go too far with it, just took the splinters off it, rounded over the corners and stuff like that, just to make it nicer to work against. And uh, it's workshop furniture at the end of the day. It's gonna get pretty beat up with use over the years. So, see if my measurements are correct now. This is the moment of truth. And this is actually the back breaking part. This is the reason why I'm willing to give up some floor space in order to have this thing on wheels. So let's get it up. Beautiful. Like a glove. Okay guys, there we go. Cart is all finished. Nice and easy to roll around. A real back saver this is gonna be. Like I said, I'm really happy to give up that amount of floor space that I'm gonna lose now by having this thing permanently out to save the back. Your back is worth everything. If your back goes, you can't do anything. And I've had some back issues lately, so I know what that's like. So this is well worth doing. So I have a nice big storage area underneath here. So I didn't wanna put drawers in because drawers are just a nightmare. I wanted somewhere to put my um, extraction hose. So that's coiled up in there. Have my tool cleaner there, gripper ripper there. A push stick, it's always nice to have one of those to hand. If, you, if they're to hand, you will always use them. You will take a chance every now and again if you just haven't got your push stick right behind you when you're just pushing through that timber. So comes with a table saw push sticks, as many as you can keep. I have a few more in there, close to hand. It's a safety thing. Goggles there, more PPE inside. Um, tool for changing the blades there. I can never find that joke, so it's hanging there now. Uh, I just have my blades then on the side here in the um, woodpecker blade saver. So you can just put your blades in that, hang them all there. They're all there ready to go. And uh, everything that I need with my table saw is now on this cart, completely mobile. I can push it over into the corner and then against my MFT table. So this worked out absolutely perfect. 
Okay, so this is going to be its new home right at the end of my miter saw station. So it fits in here nicely. I have a nice bit of storage here. So what I'm actually going to do is take all those off cuts now and stack them in here. So the floor space I lose with this, I'm going to gain back by getting rid of a lot of this rubbish that I have here. This is going to be a kind of an off cut bin that I'm going to, I might even shelve this out for all different lengths of off cuts. We'll store them underneath there out of the way because my um, lumbar storage rack is getting quite full. So the idea being, say, the saw stays here now until I need it and if I do need it it's so much easier just to pull this thing out I can put it to any part of my MFT table I want straight up against the MFT table lock down the two front wheels I can open it out now and I have my MFT table as a outfeed table for my table saw which works out absolutely perfect happy days okay guys so there we go one table saw cart slash workbench and this can be used for any type of cart that you want to make for your workbench like i said this two by four construction which some of you guys will have seen me do about a hundred times now can be adapted to anything so i've made my mft table the same way my miter saw station planters everything i've basically just used that l-shaped bracket to build an internal frame screw everything together and it's so simple so effective and extremely strong um, I think one of you guys actually did comment in one of my videos, is it necessary to use 4x2s for the workbench? Is it a bit overkill? Well, you want good, strong, sturdy stuff that can take a wallop in your workshop. So that's why I use the 4x2s. They are good and strong and sturdy. And if you are beating anything on top of your tails, hammering anything into place, you want something that can take that kind of punishment. That's not going to spring back. You want all the force to go into the material that you're trying to hit. So good, solid workbenches out of this 4x2 is a good idea. And like I said, it's super simple super easy to put together it's extremely strong these have been going a few years now and uh, they've been absolutely fantastic and i haven't had a day's trouble with them so far so hopefully you've enjoyed that guys hopefully you've got something out of it um, as always comments and questions below if you like the video it really helps me out a lot if you guys comment below it helps out me helps me out with the youtube algorithm as well and i try to answer everybody's questions so let me know what do you think of this is it a design that you would use are you going to take it for your um job site saw by all means, if you feel like it, send me pictures of yours then as well on Instagram if you do decide to make this. I'm always get a kick out of seeing you guys building these projects and I get pictures from all over the world now of you guys building some of the projects that I'm building in my workshop. So I'm gonna get out of here now, guys. Until the next one, I shall see you then. Take it easy, look after yourselves.